Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us another opportunity as your children and as ministers to uh, gather this moment. We thank you for what you did in our midst in this uh, mission, in the month of January. Thank you for the various messages, various teachings and prayer ministrations and activities that were tailored to us edifying the brethren and also to minister to the uh, to the lost in this nation thank you for our online activities and thank you lord for the uh, offline activities we pray oh lord that god you will please help us to continue to depend on you to lift you eye for you to be the focus and not these activities and we pray that father what you are said to do in our mission this month of february please let heaven manifest uh, uh, self in the name of Jesus. As ministers, O oh Lord, please strengthen us, sharpen us. Thank you, sweet Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Briefly, let's look at book of Judges, chapter 18. Judges, chapter 18. Judges, chapter 18, verse 7. Judges 18, verse 7. Then the five men departed and came to Laish, and saw the people that were daring, how they dwelt careless, after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians, and had no business with any man. That's actually deep. This is a case study of a tribe in history that we should learn from as Christians. It is not only the, the uh, Israelites, the case studies of Israelites that we should learn from. Any scriptural account is meant for our learning. In short, all scriptural accounts are meant for our learning. It is expected of every Christian to be able to see a case in the scripture, learn from it, claim blessings that are applicable, instructions that are applicable, warnings that are applicable. So from these people, we want to learn from what went wrong so that we ourselves as ministers, as children of God, we will not be repeating the same thing. In short, what the Lord has laid in our hearts is that we should, as ministers, please, in our various centers, thank God all the centers are represented, let's use this case study to minister on Sunday. Even though if it's not going to be the focus of the topic, let's try and bring it up because it's very, very important. Now, verse 28 of the same chapter, he says, and there was no deliverer, still talking about the Laish, because it was far from Zidion, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lied by Batrero, and they built a city and dwell therein. If you look at the case at the end of the day, you discover that the tribe of Dan, when they were looking for a land to possess when they they had an instruction to go and search for the land that they can conquer and possess because joshua did not they were the, the last of the tribes that joshua gave a land a, a, a pot, a allotment to in short they needed to go and find out themselves which land can be theirs and uh, lo and behold they sent five men to spy. And these five men spied. They came to this city of Laish. And we discover that the people of Laish, they dwell careless. That's important. In short, from this passage, let's look at five lessons we can learn. From verse, four, uh, so from, from verse 7, the Bible says that they dwelt careless. Imagine a city that dwells carelessly, no security. The kind of mentality these people have was strange. They did not bother to build walls. 
we had a wars of Jericho. We have wars of this, wars of that. But this, this was a city without wars. They don't give any regard to security. They felt, no, nothing will happen. Just live, just be, just enjoy the moment. And the Bible says that, um, likewise, because they were careless, they, did, they lived peacefully, quote-unquote. That kind of peaceful living is fake. That kind of ease is not good. That kind of, uh, I'm, I'm all right, is not good. On that note, let me repeat that verse again. And then they parted five men, Jude, sorry, Judges chapter 18, verse 7. Uh, five men departed and came to Laish. Please note this city. And the people that dwell therein, how they dwell careless. Let us, please, let us not dwell careless. Let us not encourage careless living among our members, even in our own selves. Then, no, number, number uh, still on that, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, that we should be careful for nothing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, but the people of Laish were careless. So let's note that, that there is need for us to be careful for nothing. The second lesson we can learn is that they did not regard any authority. They did not regard any authority because from verse 7, uh, it, it continues. It says, after the manner of Zedonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. They did not, they did not want any leader. They did not want any law. They don't want any judges. Let's be careful. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13, contrary to the lifestyle of the Laish people, that we should submit ourselves to authority. Okay? Some of our members, when they come, particularly the young ones, they would they would they would they have a tendency to be carefree. They have the tendency to to you know to, to be careless. As ministers, let us be on the lookout because, yes, the Lord wants to bless us as a church. The Lord wants to bless us as a national mission. The Lord wants to bless us as center mission. The Lord wants to bless us family by family. However, there is need for us to have the right attitude. Don't let us be like these lieish people. Number three lessons we can learn is that uh, from verse um, 7 in continuation, he said, And they were far from the Zidonians. They were far. You get to know. They actually left the Zidonians their roots and decided to create a, a city for themselves. They decided to, to, to just separate themselves from their roots, from their family, from their units, and decided to come up with their own set of identity. So the lesson there is that they were far from their roots. They were far from their roots. They don't like to dwell together with others. In Psalm 113 verse 1, 113 verse 1, the Bible says, How pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. And this is contrary to what the Laish people did here. They, fought, they removed themselves from the Zidonians and, you know, just create a team for themselves. Another thing we should, we, we should look out for, uh, or we can learn from this, is that let's, as ministers, let's be on the lookout for our members that just chose to do their own thing. It's just like 
a set of sheep leaving the unified fold and go and begin to create their own small, small fold. You know, it will be easier for the wolf to attack them. It will be very easy for wolf to attack small fold than for a big fold. All right. It may actually be, de depend on their mentality. You know how how they what they 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 they, they, they learn or where they were coming from. Yes, but as far as the f uh, there is a church, there is a unit, there is a a center, be it in Godolu or in Budapest or in Debrecen or also our native centers. Let's look out for those who like to separate themselves. You know, we are ministers. We, 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 we can't force them. Let's just let them understand that, look, why are you trying to be far away from the church? Why are you trying to distance yourself from the church? Oh, they will tell you every good excuses. Oh, I just like to be on my own. When people are beginning to tell you that, as a minister, as a shepherd, as head of department, watch out. Yours is just to say, look, let them, let them understand the danger of not being part of what we are doing. Because as the Laish people here, they chose to be far away from the Zidonians. They're supposed to be the unified leadership or, or tribe. And the Bible says also that they had no business with any man. They had no business with any man. That is, they separated themselves. And that's contrary to what the Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17, that says, Iron, sharpen, iron. Trust me. Iron, sharpen, iron. But when you say you don't have any business to do with anybody, you are just on your own. You will be blunt. Let's encourage unity among our members in our various centers because we will have enough a lot to gain being there for each other career wise uh, mission advice mission experiences uh, legal experiences you know permit experiences job experiences let's encourage that let 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 our brethren know let 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 promote this unity in all our centers, so that we will not be like these lavish people. Now, verse 28 said something that is very, very profound. In verse 28, the Bible says, And there was no deliverer, no judges, no one to act as their leader. Why? Because it was far from Zidion. And they had no business with any man. Do you know what this passage is trying to tell us? If you, by, by God's grace, if you uh, have time, read the whole of chapter 28, you discover that it was easier for the tribe of Dan to conquer Laish because of those attributes, negative attributes. Number one, they dwell carelessly. Number two, they were far from their roots. That is the Zidonians. Number three, they had no business with any man. Number four, uh, they did not regard any authority. Then number five, they had no leader. Any member, any center, Anyone that is walking towards this or that is having this attribute may find some things challenging to face. Yeah, I've been here now for, by God's grace, for this, at this mission post, it's over, over, over a decade. I look back for those who stuck to us, stuck to the mission who connect, who did not remove themselves. Even those who are in, in other places of the world, they, they were, they, those, particularly those who are doing very well now, 
who came in as ordinary students, but now they have their permit, they are in, they are in, in their professions, they are, they are doing well. I discovered that they, when they were with us, they, they stuck with us. They did not choose to, you know, do like the lash. Even those who, uh, for example, from Pech, this, now one of the reasons why we don't have Pech active anymore was because most of them then, they had this attitude. They actually said it to my face. And I was like, you guys are students. And so I remember my wife, we, we, we spent like a week there, my wife and my son, just to let them know that, look, you guys have nothing to lose. We, we are your parents. Oh, no, no, no. At the end of the day, when they finished in Pech, they now, most of them, at least few of them, I still see them on the streets of Budapest. Shame. A, a, a shame because of shame they can't come i'm not saying they are not doing well but i i perceive now that okay maybe they are going to one european church nobody hears of them anymore or you know maybe they have maybe they are going to their own challenges their own way in short i heard that one was he had it so tough that he needed to go and apply as a refugee in another in another european countries when if there were, there were, you know, submission and, and the, the, that connection and that oneness and that, you know, shares of ideas. Maybe things could have been better. Or maybe I'm wrong. But the truth is that there is need for us to promote that unity among our brethren. Because honestly, we can't help this. Even in Deborah's sin, if you look at if you look at uh, the trend of things when they are there, it is those who, by the special grace of God, you know they saw us as a national family. That when they because when you are true in places like Debrecen, Page, Zeged, you can't be living there, except if God blesses that individual or places like Godolu. He said, God blesses such individual and that person gets job. It's not that it's not impossible. Or, but at the end of the day, they, people will not, they will still come to Budapest. And because they did not see us as, they did not respect that unity, they will feel reluctant to come. And those that will eventually come with dragging their legs and shames, they will still sit down and, they, and, and the moment they get what they want, they, they move away. Even they will still be in Hungary, but they will not go and join another church. In a way, it, it's, it, it felt, you know, it is understandable if you move outside Hungary, but when you are in Hungary, you that you came begging, crying for help, crying for assistance, and the church went outside their ways. We even gave you more, spend money on you. Eventually, you now get settled. They will not be the one even acting, leading rebel against the church. Let's try and watch out for things people like that or for such attitude but honestly we can't help it but we can try and promote the advantages the blessedness of unity the blessedness of not being careless the blessedness of regarding authority the blessedness of not being away from their roots and the blessedness of the fact that people don't have, they don't, they don't have any business to do with any man. Well, at the moment things may be rosy, things may be rosy, you know, but you don't know the future. That individual you are raising your shoulder at may be the one that will help you in the future, career-wise, even job-wise. I mean, between last uh, week and now, I, uh, I think I've sent. At least two people to go and meet uh, Pastor Sam. I don't know whether they saw you in Debrecen or they or is Pastor Femi in Miss Cook. Maybe some of you don't know that I send these people to you guys. Say, look, I can help you. Go and meet them. They are the one that they are in that city. They can help. I send people to Tayo. I send people to those ones that I know that they have answers to the to what they are. They are I mean, these people need. And I, I discovered that even these people that meet me. I discovered that they don't even join us online. They don't, they hardly come to church. Even some of them are still on the workforce. 
But you know, out of fatherly art or pastoral art or ministers art, because honestly, I'm only saying from my own experience, you guys also have your own experiences. Because the moment you are a head of department, in short, the moment you are a father, just imagine a father, the, the father of the prodigal son, how he was, how he felt. Or the moment you are a head of, uh, of a center, or you are even leading, you know, you will, people will, will just be, misbehave. Which, as, a, as, a, as a worker, as a minister, you shouldn't allow that to discourage you. But just be on a lookout. Try and promote unity, the strong unity that will guide against people just living carelessly. And I pray that as we, as we follow this, as we inject this in our teachings diplomatically, I mean, because honestly, we need to be diplomatic and at the same time, spirit-led and, and, and also grace to create that platform of trust. Because honestly, if you ask me, or theologically, why did the Laish people, why did they distance themselves from the Zidonian? I don't know. But the Bible made it clear. These people were careless. As in, they don't, I mean, what do you expect? A child doesn't like his father's authority. A child doesn't have anything to do with the unity in the family. A child, you know, even is in, in the family, but still distance himself or distance herself. Or, or a child, you know, said, oh, no, no, I don't have any business with my dad or my mom or my brothers and sister. Hey, I'm still part of the family, but, hey, but you know, when, it's, when people are beginning to say things like that, watch out as a minister. Imagine a child saying, yes, my daddy is there, but I'm not under him. Aha, uh -huh. then there is issue. There is issue. Um, the Lord will give us the grace to cope with these things. To understand and to make sure that the members, the people under us, under our administrations, do not go astray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this short message. It is only you that can explain to us better. We are ministers, O oh Lord. We are workers in your vineyard. We pray, O oh Lord, you grant us the grace to be faithful, to, to look out for the sheep under us so that they will not go astray. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will be careful, not careless like the large people. We will regard authority, authority of Jesus Christ, authority of the leadership of the church, authority of the leadership of the land that we are in. Help us, Lord, that we will not remove ourselves from our Christian heritage, our Christian roots, but we will dwell together in unity. Help us, Lord, that we will not say, oh, we don't want, we don't have any business with anybody, but Lord will appreciate that iron sharpens iron. Help us, Lord, and our members to put ourselves under your divine leadership and not to act as a lavish people that refuse to be under any deliverer. Thank you, sweet Father, because we know you have answered. All our members will be well accounted for. All our family members will be well accounted for. This mission will continue to flourish and prosper in our hands as ministers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.